Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Staying Sweet, the podcast. I'm really excited to introduce today's guest. It's actually someone I've known for quite a long time now. Welcome, Kira. Hello. Introduce Hello. yourself. Thank you for having me. Um, so I'm Kira. I'm a freelance journalist and a meditation teacher. And Alice and I went to uni together, so we've known each other for quite some time. Quite some time. <laughs> and how have you found it since leaving university? Do you think you have, like you've always known that you wanted to kind of dip eventually into the wellness space like how were you introduced to it and how have you kind of found your way in the industry and in your niche I would say I think it's taken me quite a while I tried like lots of different things in the first few years and I spent five years in house magazines just really literally doing writing about anything and everything to find what I was really passionate about and I'd always had like an interest in health and well-being um but it wasn't something I initially, when I went into journalism, thought I was going to specialise in. So definitely it took a lot of time of trying different things to figure out what my niche was and what I enjoyed the most. And then kind of from that, I'd, you know, had this brilliant experience with meditation and mindfulness and breath work and how that had helped me through um, those like very early years in my career. And then that kind of led me to train as a meditation teacher and now it all kind of comes together in this nice little package and I get to do, I get to write about health and wellbeing for other brands and for myself. And then I also get to teach meditation as well. And it all kind of um, falls under the same like umbrella in a sense. Amazing. And how was that first experience for you? So you, you were sort of navigating your early career. Was it an event? Was it something that you were kind of introduced through work like how did you how did you come across well wellness and well-being as almost like like a, a category really mm. I think the the publications that I worked for like in the very early days it was a lot of focus on um fashion and beauty and lifestyle and celebrity news and that was really fun for me to cover um but whenever I got the opportunity to write about like health and well-being and even just kind of writing um about beauty from like a self-care well-being angle like I just find that so interesting and really connected with how I felt about my kind of wellness routine and so the more I got the opportunity to write about those things like the more I enjoyed it and realized that this was something that I wanted to to do more of. Mm. And with the with the university Mm -hmm. and your degree did you find that category kind of fell into your lap or was it something that you were even aware of at university? I definitely don't think I thought of um, kind of health and well-being as like a category or like a niche that you could have within journalism. I think I loved my journalism course. I had the best time at university and like made some great friends there and just had a really good experience. Um, But it was very like news focused. It was a lot about kind of, yeah, like writing for newspapers, writing like hard news per se and Mm. not necessarily delving into these other lifestyle topics um so whenever I went into the industry I kind of thought I was gonna be going down like the news route or the investigative journalism route because I love reading that Mm. but then I realized that's actually not for me like actually doing it is quite hard yeah that's like a totally different um kettle of fish and like all of my kind of assignments at uni were looking at um it from like the investigative journalism angle like my dissertation my research papers and then when I got out into media and was like in the job at the desk I thought it's actually really difficult to do um that kind of media work and not to say that I wouldn't still love to try it but that kind of to bring that well wellness element into it like I love investigating like wellness trends and wellness topics and Mm. um you know interviewing people in the industry and it's not necessarily what I was kind of introduced to at uni it was something that I had to come across through experience of working for lots of different brands and writing about lots of different topics and just seeing what really fitted with my values and what I wanted to do as well. Mm. And was there any particular trends or things that you noticed in the wellbeing industry that like took your fancy or that you thought, do you know, what, I'm going to give that a go for me and see if it works? Mm. Were you someone that wanted to kind of try it first and then you realise like, wow, this is such an interesting industry that I'm already doing those things mm. to make my own life better? Yeah, I think in the last few years, I've really started to 
I mean, I think from everything kind of in general that the world has gone through, we've all really looked at, yes, we need to do things for our physical health, but we do also need to look after our mental health and well-being. And there's, you know, techniques that I've tried um, over the years or, yeah, even like trends. I've, I've really, you know, looked at like um, nutrition trends and things mm. like that. And just I've experimented with a lot and then. I just get the opportunity to write about it now which is really exciting and one topic I write a lot about is sleep and that is something that I really struggled with personally and then I've spoken to so many experts about it and now I feel like I can um, really like delve into that topic from a personal angle and also have all the expert input as well. Mm, that's really interesting and do you, do you think people generally now still live a very stressful life because I feel like we all went down that hole I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> slow live yeah. I'm gonna quit my job I'm gonna do this that the other since then mm. you know it's been a couple of years now do you think people are back on the grind are you still writing articles about burnout and people living a very stressful life are you seeing that still yeah definitely I think we had that period where everyone was forced to slow down and you know everyone had like a daily walk that they went for and they had this like meditation routine or um they would sit down and read for 10 minutes every morning because our lives changed so drastically and now we're kind of coming back to our new form of normal I mean I still don't think that the kind of world that we live in today and, and particularly the working world is anywhere you can't compare it to what it was before COVID because it is so different mm. and so many of us are still working from home but are carrying a lot of stress um still that we just kind of have left over from that period as well it was a really stressful time for a lot of people and I don't think we've really like delved into how that's going to affect us long term mm, um that's so interesting and yeah even now when I you know yeah there's a lot of stress it's still going around a lot of burnout maybe even more so because people are trying to find that balance between you know our new normal working from home mm. still having a social life still having connection and community but you're, we're just juggling a lot mm. we really are and do you think the whole work from home thing is beneficial or do you think that isolation brings on a new mm. a new experience of stress and pressure and it's almost like not having people to interact with and just have those daily moments where you might have a small conversation or things like that. Do you think having work from home policies is, is affecting people in a different way? I think it really depends on the person. I think some people thrive from working from home um, and some people really struggle. And I think mm -hmm. it also depends on your personal situations. Like, you know, some people who thrive from working from home really enjoy having that time that they would be commuting to do a workout, go for a walk, um, meet up for coffee with friends. But then you will have other people who maybe live alone and are a bit more isolated. And I think we know how important like human connection is for our well-being. Like it's so well documented and we need to have those connections with people. And as you say, it could be something so simple, like in the canteen at work, like just a little chat with someone about how's your day going. Mm. Or, or when you make that first coffee when you go yeah, into an office. I actually personally really miss offices. Yeah, but I, I, I do struggle now because <laughs> I'm fully work from home. Like yeah. since I um, went freelance earlier this year and worked for myself, I'm always at home. But I do make an effort to connect with other freelancers and yeah. like meet up for co-working days because I do, do think it's so important. Um, and it's just finding now a way that you can continue the well-being routine you might have developed during that time where we were constantly working from home and find a way for it to fit into your life now that you're in this like hybrid world. Definitely. And do you think those mindfulness practices and meditation getting yourself on a walk are achievable and attainable today or do you think it's just another thing to add to the to-do list of life yeah that's what I never want anyone to feel like it's something um to add to their to-do list and I think the way I approach it is find a way that works for you find a way that it fits into your life that's sustainable that's realistic that it's something that you're going to be able to do every day um, and I actually had a client recently who finished up a like a six-week course with me and her her biggest takeaway was that it was before she saw meditation as a chore it was something she had to sit down and do every morning she had to make time for and now that she's just shifted that perspective and she sees it as I'm gonna 
scatter mindfulness techniques throughout my day. I'm going to do a breath work on the tube. I'm going to do a little meditation before like a big meeting. Um, and she now feels like she's opting into the practice rather right. than feeling like it's something that's on her to-do list. And I think you just have to approach it from a way that works for you. What works for me won't work for you. What works for you won't work for me. Mm. And so it's finding techniques that are going to work for your lifestyle. Mm. So do you think that businesses or sort of more corporate spaces who are trying to integrate something, mm. can they can they do that successfully if it's so individual and it's not a one size fits all situation? How, how could an industry or a business tackle that? I think having the option for people mm. is really important. I mean, if a business is able to put on like breathwork sessions on a Monday and it's something that they can offer employees they can bring someone in who's going to teach them these breathwork techniques and they're almost equipping their employees with the skills to be able to manage stress to be able to live a little bit more mindfully and then they can take those techniques and fit them into their lifestyle Mm. just kind of as and when they need them or maybe they want to develop a regular mindfulness practice so maybe they will come every Monday to the session and then continue on Tuesday morning Wednesday morning and do the same thing at home so yeah I think it's it's given people the resources and the option to to take on those practices. Mm. So what's your favorite way to sort of switch off if you were if you were someone that was quite new to it Mm. what would you say is like your go-to like your bread and butter of just mindfulness? (laughs) (laughs) So I I mean I have like a super elaborate nighttime routine it's just that tell me more. (laughs) It's just something that for me, that's like my switch at the end of the day. I switch off from work. I I feel like when you're self-employed, you work a lot Mm. and you need to have like a hard stop. And for me, it's when after dinner when I start my nighttime routine. Um, But one technique I'll always do in the evening, even if it's just once I get into bed, like for five minutes, is a body scan meditation. And I think that is such a great starting point for a lot of people add a little bit of breath work into the start of it, take some deep breaths and then just mentally scan each part of the body and just see if you can notice any tension or any sensations and just see if you can let the body relax. And it's just a way to almost like cleanse the body and the mind of the day and help you switch off and and get ready for bed. Do you practice gratitude? Is there anything that you do? Like, do you do it like a gratitude journal? I know a lot of like five minute journals are very mm-hmm. popular. I've kind of started doing like 10 gratitudes in the morning just to That's kind amazing. of shift my perspective, be less negative. Mm-hmm. I try not to be negative, but in a, in a world that's, you know, full of bad news yeah. <laughs> often, um, it's good to kind of start your day on like a positive note. Do you ever find yourself writing things down? Are you as a journalist (laughs) do you write things down funnily enough I actually don't write it down I just like take a mental note Mm -hmm. like I'll do normally in the evening I'll do three things I'm grateful for and sometimes I'll turn to my boyfriend and say tell me three things you're grateful (laughs) for and it's like something we'll do together and he does entertain um entertain that but yeah I I kind of take a mental note but I think it's a really powerful practice and there's like a lot of research that shows it can really help shift that mindset help you feel a little bit more positive boost positive emotions um so I think it's a great thing to do I'm just terrible at sticking to those journals <laughs> yeah you know? it's really yes. bad I like a journal that's like not dated yeah so like I, I never can work with a diary because mm-hmm. I just miss it for weeks. Yeah. If it's something that I could just pick up when I need it, I'm much more productive. Oh, so with much it. better. Because even then, the if you kind of go away on holiday and you're yes. like, oh gosh, I didn't take it with me, and that's five days I've missed. And yeah. So yeah, an undated gratitude journal would be great. Yes. So your Instagram says helping city dwellers find quiet in chaos. I like that because it's very mm-hmm. specific. Focuses on on, like, on the city lifestyle. Would you say that you spotted a gap in the market for people in the city? Is that just through your experience living in London? And I know you're not originally from London. Yeah. So, like, tell me <laughs> tell me a bit more about that sort of early part of your career, like your, your journalism career at uni, because I do remember it. And, like, you kind of, you, you did sort of go home and you had that those, like, time periods. Do you think that it's harder to live in the city and practice mindfulness? I think it's... A little bit different than if maybe you lived in the countryside or even just on the outskirts of a city like Mm. things are a little bit slower um I really noticed the shift when I moved to London which must have been gosh I don't even know how many years ago like eight or nine years ago quite a long time ago now um 
but the shift in how busy it is like mm-hmm. people are constantly rushing um you know you could literally just stand on a platform and you'll just see so many people rushing around you and I just think we're always on the go we've always got somewhere to be and I'm definitely guilty of that and particularly in the early stages of my career I felt like I was trying to do everything Mm. I was trying to be at every event to take every meeting um you know then rushing back to the office like I was trying to fit so much in and that can be really overwhelming and Mm. it can cause you to burn out Mm. so that's why now I kind of have seen that through the clients that I've worked with or the people who've come to my events and retreats is they just want something that's going to just like slow the pace down a little bit for them um and so that the techniques that I focus on they're really simple really easy to do I like to teach people how to do them and then say go away and do them yourself because you need to be able to kind of um you need to be able to lead yourself through these practices so that you can do them anytime you need them and um the one client I mentioned earlier, she said she now finds herself just doing breath work like on the tube, just naturally rather than listening to music or mm. um, scrolling on her phone. And I think it could just be as simple as that. Like that could make the biggest difference. It's the smallest little change. Definitely. I feel like sometimes I've done that with like a podcast or something, actually being more conscious when you're in those periods where you're just traveling. You haven't really got the the obvious distractions of like social media mm-hmm. because the internet usually doesn't work yes. down there so you can kind of give yourself five minutes um what practices can somebody do if they are still on the go and they have to be like maybe they're driving somewhere or they are on the tube is there something that you recommend do you have any um, meditations of your yeah. own is there something that you integrate into your clients and say give this a try yeah there's one actually that I think is really good if you are um traveling whether you're on a train a tube in the car it's just like an active listening practice and it's just tuning in to all the sounds around you and just whenever we are meditating essentially what we're trying to do is teach ourselves to become aware of our thoughts our feelings sensations in the body and to just notice them without judgment so let the thoughts come and let them go um, and bring yourself back to your anchor, whether that's your breath or visualization or anything like that. So when we can't do a meditation practice like that, when we're traveling, um, we can try this listening practice instead. And basically you're just listening out for all the sounds around you and you're just noticing them when they come. Um, but you're not kind of attaching any emotion to them. You're not trying to make them stay. You're not trying to like hang on to them and continue to listen to them. You just notice them let them go and wait for the next sign to come and it's just a really nice way of bringing yourself into the present moment practicing that um Mm non-attachment and practicing becoming aware of what's going on around you as well amazing so you've done some in-person well you've done lots of in-person events and what I love about the journalism industry is you get to attend lots of in-person yes. events. <laughs> and the best ones are always, I find, the fitness ones. Mm-hmm. And the, anything with a holistic mindfulness or like a meditation or a sound bath. How have you found that in integrating that into your career as a journalist and actually being on the other end? Because yeah. I've seen you've done a few yeah, it's a events really that you've hosted. How yeah. have you found that? Have you enjoyed that? I mean, I love going to the press events like the sound baths the meditations (laughs) and it's funny because a lot of the people who take those are now people that I'm working with through my own events um which is really cool but yeah it is really different whenever you are on the other side of it but I absolutely love it it's like one of my favorite things to do is to organize those events Mm. um and yeah I love taking them I really feel like teaching in person is like where I thrive the most Mm. I mean I love doing my virtual calls with my virtual clients but I think that that in-person connection is so important and I just love being able to yeah meet all the people who come to the events and connect with them and um, share that experience with them as well it's really Mm. great is there anything that you've done where like someone has kind of come up to you and said wow that's changed my life or they've just approached something differently because I feel like like you say when it's in person it feels you can almost feel the energy mm. of the person. Is, is Are there any practices that you've done that have kind of left people going, wow, like this is going to change my life? I did, um, earlier in the year, I did a retreat all about sleep. Mm. And one of the practices we did was the body scan meditation. And someone did come up to me afterwards and say, like, that was amazing. I felt like I was floating. Um, I've never been able to do that practice before. And I think that's where you really... Um, as you say, like you can feel the energy in the room, you can feel the energy from the other people who are there uh, at the retreat with you. 
um, and also you have someone who's actually guiding you through it and sometimes it's easier to really let yourself relax into it if someone's guiding you through rather than trying to think about what you need to do and do it yourself mm. if you're at home guided is so much better because yeah. you can like very much so close your eyes zone out yeah get into that state of mind which is really really lovely is there anything that you're working on at the moment that anyone listening might be able to get involved in are you are your books open what's yes. what's, what's happening <laughs> in the world of yeah. finding quiet so we've got um yeah launching a retreat next week um one in September and one in November at um, Warnemore House, which is very exciting. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, with a friend of mine, um, Maud Ekman, who is a mindset coach and a yoga teacher. So we're going to partner up and do a really, um, yeah, a really beautiful morning retreat at this like gorgeous luxury um, space. And we've got lots of partners, um, wellbeing brands teaming up with us for the event. So there'll be really nice goodie bags and some treats on the day and stuff. So yeah, it's very exciting. That's really <laughs> cool. And how's that work in terms of, because when this sort of comes out, um, is this something that you'll be doing regularly where you want to be doing sort of retreats? How can people yes. get invited <laughs> or get to go? Yeah, so we're, yeah, these will be regular. So one, um, two at the end uh, two coming up to the end of the year um and then hopefully some more after that as well but yeah I'd love to do more retreats I think that is just it's so nice to mm. just like switch off for a morning even if it all you have is like three hours yes. of your day um on a Sunday morning to just come along and really relax and, and let yourself be kind of looked after as well and guided through these practices definitely you almost like float away don't you yeah. after one of them that's amazing. Um, and if anyone wants to work with you in particular on uh, like a like on a private basis, is that something that you're sort of available for at the moment? Are your books open? Yeah, are the they? books are always the open. The books are open. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, I have got a few spaces for one-to-one clients at the minute. And then I also have some corporate um, workshops that I'm working on as well and a couple of spaces for that. And what's been really brilliant about that kind of space is, is also... I do the one-to-one stuff in person or virtually and that really like fills me up. I love doing that so much. It's amazing to see the transformation that people can go through in six or 12 weeks. Um, but then teaming up with these other experts to host the corporate events or mm. the retreats is just amazing. It's great to um, be able to work with other people who are just like the best at what they do it's so great so it's been lovely chatting with you about a little bit more about what you do and how other people can kind of integrate those techniques into their lives is there anything that you would want to leave our listeners with today something that just might be like a food for thought or just like a a notion to remember Mm -hmm. and take away on today's episode yeah I think with living a bit more mindfully or having a meditation routine like don't overthink it it can be so simple and it can be as simple as a breath work in the morning or a body scan before bed and if you just try to sprinkle these little mindful moments throughout your day you'll see such a shift in how you feel and um yeah you'll probably want to do them more and you might want to have a meditation routine after that and that's amazing but if not if you just find little moments for yourself throughout the day I think that's so important just for your overall well-being and your happiness as well amazing well thank you so much for coming on to the podcast it's really lovely because it's just been lovely to see how you've organically kind of found your oh, your niche you. and I think it's it's always lovely to see that sort of transformation and your freelance life as well yeah. so I'll make sure to link everything below if you want to work with you thank and you so um, thank you so much for coming thank on. you for having me thank you bye <laughs>